Hello, I'm Meg Salyer, and I'd like to welcome you to the Ward 6 Council Show. I think today we have a returning guest, and maybe a frequent um, guest on our show, and it's Tom Jones, who's president of City Rescue Mission. Tom, thank you for coming again today. Um, it's an honor to be here. Well, you know, the, the topic of um, those most needy in our community is something that we try to address on a regular basis, sure. and I appreciate so much what, what you all do in your organization. Um, you are... Um, do a fabulous job as a standalone. You also are a big part of our Homeless Alliance and the partnerships that we have in the community. Absolutely. Maybe we could start right away with what do you think as a community we're doing to help try to end homelessness, which perhaps is the end goal here? Well, the reality is every community has impoverished individuals. And, and the reason they're in the state they're in is as varied as there are numbers of people. So there isn't a one process fix for every person's plight of uh, hopelessness and, and uh, poverty. However, I think that Oklahoma City has one of the most amazing networks of agencies and organizations that love to collaborate. And that's, that's kind of unusual on a, on a national level because so many organizations have a tendency to try to silo their services. They're all vying for dollars and they want to prove that their services are the most critical. And, and they are. I'm not saying that they're not important, but the, the, the greatest way to have the outcomes that we're all hoping for, and that's to end people's poverty and homelessness, is to work together. And I think that uh, with all of the different agencies, and we have uh, literally hundreds in this community that all come to the table on a monthly basis and say, how can we not duplicate services, but how can we work together and, and, and make sure that the the citizens that are impoverished are the ones that are getting the greatest benefit from all of our efforts. I really do think that's one of the greatest things I've seen in the five years or so that I've been serving on the council is the collaborative development of the way these services work. And, um, you know, it, it really does make a difference. And there's not just a partnership amongst the agencies, but there is a blooming partnership with the city of Oklahoma Absolutely. City that includes our hot team. And maybe you could tell the folks a little bit about how you how you work with Oklahoma City Police Department and their special unit. Well, people <clears throat> who are yeah, in distress, <laughs> be it mental illness, be it substance abuse issues, they are the ones that are out in the community and in their inability to manage their circumstances. They many times have the police involved with, if nothing else, just concern for their safety. And um, the hot team uh, put together uh, through the Oklahoma City Police Department, they're literally on the streets uh, looking for these vulnerable individuals, not to punish them, not to, to give them a ticket or get them in trouble, but to guide them and give them insights and understanding as to what their options are. That, here again, is the beginning of ending their homelessness. So helping connect people with services. And I've, I've been so impressed that they're out at four o'clock in the morning. Absolutely. They are hands-on visiting these camps. They're getting to know the folks. And you know, I really want to credit Chief City and, and his leadership. They looked around the country at best practices and identified, I think, Colorado Springs as a place that had this kind of outreach. And um, I believe that in the last turning point, or um, Time and point where we point count time. point in time mm -hmm. where we count the folks on the Absolutely. street. It's had a real impact. We it have has. more people in permanent housing and more people in shelters than we had in the past. And Absolutely. so um, it, be, it it builds a, a network of relationship. You know, if you if you're having difficulties with your mental health and you're afraid of the police because they're going to arrest you, then you try to hide. And and but this. This group of dedicated officers are on the search f for the purpose of helping them, not to punish them. Because, you know, mental health is a, is, a, is a terrible thing to have to live with. But if you feel like the whole world is against you and is just looking to find you so they can punish you, then that's got to be a horrible way to live. But now that these officers are truly on purpose, 
connecting with them and, and showing them and sharing with them the different agencies and uh, services that are available to them. And they actually become a liaison to, to even the shelter because a lot of those folks maybe have had a negative experience at a shelter mm -hmm. and they don't ever want to come back. And, and so the officers can actually talk to them and say, listen, let's, let's, let's go try it again. And they've got all kinds of uh, services that they can provide for you. And if you don't like it, guess what? Then you can go back you know, to where you came from, but maybe this time. And so they're encouraging them. And it's been amazing That's that great. with their level of authority, that the, mm -hmm. that the homeless respect their authority, they're listening to them, where they might not listen to me right. and they might not listen to <laughs> they you. They certainly wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's working and it's, it's really causing these folks to give it a chance and we're seeing wonderful it's results from it. great to hear. A little bit drilling specifically, one of the things that I get more calls about in my office than anything are folks standing on the medians asking for money, holding a sign, hungry, out of work. Is that a good way to help? Is that the best way to help? Or what would your feedback be um, about that? Well, our community is probably one of the most giving, compassionate communities in the country. Uh, we've been through a lot together as a community and we've, we've seen people go through much pain. And out of our compassionate hearts, we wanna, we wanna help. The, the challenge with giving money to a panhandler on the street is that it generally is just enough to get them through the day, mm -hmm. not enough to sustain their living, and therefore it's kind of been a part of the problem in that you're enabling them to just get through today. And when they're in a state of despair, usually what they spend that money on isn't something healthy for them. Mm -hmm. And so we give it out of a compassionate, caring, loving motive, but in turn, if you don't understand the full uh, impact that it has on that person's life, you're actually helping them stay in a state of despair that they can never get out of because they can't see past the few dollars that they're getting that particular day. Plus the danger, I mean, <laughs> listen, I, I worry for them sitting on those uh, medians because cars are going fast down through there and just one trip, one, you know, tripping over something or, or a, a car an accident, a, curb, a exactly. car jumping a curb and they're yeah. just, they're yeah. hurt That or really killed. has been, for, for years, that's Absolutely. been my biggest concern is to see people walking and weaving through traffic. It's extremely dangerous. And um, so trying to address it from a safety concern, but also, uh, you know, you raise such an important point that if we could help direct people to services rather than facilitate a day-to-day -day right. existence, we probably would be in the long term helping so much more. Helping them, helping them more. Otherwise. Now it's easier, right? you can just hand them $5 and drive away going, I did my part. And that's okay, but is that really what you wanna do? Is just the bare necessities or do you truly wanna be a part of a community that says, you know, my heart hurts for you because you're facing these challenges. Let me tell you, there are services available for you, free of charge. You don't know where they are, but I do. So one way we're <laughs> going to talk about how to do that, I have my card here. And I, I want um, everybody to know that um, City Rescue does have a compassion card. Yes. And it has a phone number on it. You can ask for these. You can keep them in your car. And you can hand these out. Yes. And tell us a little bit. You'll provide a ride. Sure. One of the challenges, if they're out on Northwest 63rd or whatever, and you say you need to go to City Rescue Mission, they're going, well, I have no way to get there. Well, most people aren't going to say, well, hop in my car. I'm going to mm -hmm. take you. I mean, we <laughs> we live in the 21st century, and that's usually not what we offer as a as a, uh, an assistance. And so, so City Rescue Mission has put together the compassion card. You can actually go to our website, cityrescue.org, and print these off. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I that way that. you don't have to even worry about getting the cards. Great. You can print them off, cut them up, carry them in your car. It has an 800 number on it. And most of these folks have a cell phone. It's not like homeless people don't have cell phones. They, they, they all have, in most instances, cell phones. And then if they don't, use your you cell phone and make the call right, there. The call right yeah. there. And when they call City Rescue Mission, um, we will send a shuttle out to wherever they are located and pick that person up, bring them back to the shelter, and truly offer them everything they're asking for on their sign. Mm -hmm. Now. The real test is if they refuse, then they're probably not really homeless. They're probably not really hungry. 
they're probably just playing off of your emotions to try to get you to give them free money. So if your objective is to help them mm -hmm. solve their situation, of whatever you know they're, they're proclaiming as their situation, then go the extra mile. Offer them the full package of benefits that would help them uh, get those needs taken care of. And it doesn't necessarily include giving them money. Right. because Tom, I really do think many of us have had an example of um, offering a meal or offering sure. a hamburger or offering something and have that declined yes. um, with, want, a, with a request the cash. for cash. They and want the so cash. Again, that's so important to realize that out of our generous spirit, we're trying to help, but let's right. think about how to help. Absolutely. And, you know, at the city level, um, these partnerships are so important. Um, the, the dollars that the city of Oklahoma City provides sure. to um, our social services efforts pales in comparison to what is provided by the faith-based and other sure. parts of our community. And it's an amazing um, way that we're able to fill a gap that, that the city uh, can't manage on its own. The problem is though, as long as they keep getting cash on the corner, they're gonna be back tomorrow. Right. And so if we as a community realize we wanna help them, but we wanna help them end their homelessness. We wanna help them end their hunger. And by doing that, we lead them to the agencies that already have their funding, already have the resources. It's not costing any more. Yep. They're already there ready to provide. And then if those folks don't want that help, then we should be able to drive right on past them and say, oh well. I've tried. I tried. So we have just a few minutes. Tell me just a little bit about City Rescue Mission for those that don't know about it. Where are you? Um, how many beds do you have? Sure. We're downtown, okay. uh, on the west side of downtown, uh, on California Street, okay. um, right, California is just one block north of Reno, right. okay, and we're between Classen and Chartel, uh, mm -hmm. there downtown, the old footprint of the old I-40, uh, I <laughs> which it's become so much more visible, oh, which is it's actually wonderful. a wonderful it's thing wonderful. with that structure yeah. down now, it's just great. And uh, we have 640 beds. Uh, we're the state's largest homeless shelter. Uh, we serve uh, single men, single women, and families. And um, we've had a 181% increase in the last 12 months of the number of families with small children. That's what absolutely breaks my heart. We have yes. at times over 100 children living in that shelter. But if they're in that level of need, we want them there because our objective is to end their homelessness. We want to position them that when they leave City Rescue, they're going to be able to sustain a living wage job, uh, uh, housing, and, and all of the aspects. While they're there, their children are getting tutored school uh, academically so that they can get caught up in school. We have opportunities for them to go to uh Possibilities. Absolutely, positive tomorrows, positive tomorrows is a, is one of the partners that we work right. with. Um, a, a variety of schools around the community uh, come and pick their the kids up. And so I'm going to have a huge favor to ask you. Okay. I'm going to ask it ask you to come back because we have sure, so much sure. to talk about. We're sure. we're kind of running out of time. But if folks want to help, can you give me your website? CityRescue.org. So they can print off these wonderful cards, Absolutely. provide rides for people. They can find out more information. I know you're always looking for dollars yourself to help support the operations so if they want to donate they can go to the website or they can they can come call. down and volunteer and f see what we do i would rather them do that than just right, give than money just give you money yeah it's an amazing operation i've been through it a number of times your staff is um, extraordinary um, very very compassionate and again I, I the city of oklahoma city couldn't begin to address this problem without the help and the partnerships and we're so grateful for city rescue mission and the leadership that you provide you. within this coalition of community of folks that are trying to help. So thank you so much for being here. We'll do it again soon. Absolutely.